Well, new swimming, we're, we're appreciating the spirit shown by Kate and William yesterday, who joined in a Mexican wave at Wimbledon, and we're the ladies whose waves usually end up with a wobbly bingo wing alert. It's Denise Welsh, Carol McGiffin, Linda Bellingham, and me, Kate Thornton. <laughs> Today is a very special uh, edition of Loose Women because we uh, welcome a lady who has certainly let loose in her time, joining us as a part of the panel as we take a look back on her extraordinary career. Our guest this afternoon will also be performing songs from her current album, Confessions. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, I give you the one and only, Liza Minnelli! <laughs> never kissed a man before Now isn't that a shame I never kissed a man before Before I knew his name I never had a taste for wine Now isn't that a sin I never had a taste for wine for wine can't compare with gin It's nice, as nice can be My faith is at last restored To know that vice can be its own reward I always go to bed at ten Then I go home at four. Thank you so much. Oh, honey, I'm so glad to be here. I love you guys. Are you ready to get loose? Am I ready to who? Get loose. <laughs> yes. Good. I'm ready for you. I just, I'm really a fan. Oh, so. well, we are too. OK. Well, we're going to have you back with us in a little while. But for All now, right, ladies and gentlemen, show her some love. Liza Minnelli. <laughs> women if we weren't getting up close and personal with our guests so uh, we're going to extend that invitation to you if you've got any burning questions you'd like us to put to Liza on your behalf then get in touch and send us your thoughts on uh, that or any of today's chats you can go to the website email us loose.women at itv.com you can also post your questions and comments on our Facebook and Twitter sites but make sure you get your views in by 1 15 today that's June the 28th and we'll read out the very best later on okay when it comes to show business there are some icons that transcend all others and Today we're joined by a lady whose story is the epitome of the Hollywood dream. Let's take a look at some of the chapters that have made up an incredible life for Liza with a Z. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Liza Minnelli. Although already recognised as an artist in her own right, it was the 1964 appearance with her mother, Judy Garland, that really thrust Liza Minnelli into the spotlight. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we're gonna go through it together. Listen, it's really... She went from Broadway to the big screen and was soon to be yeah. one of the most recognisable faces in the world. Because Lisa with an S goes snuds. It's Z instead of S, line instead of Lee. Simple as can be, see Liza. Don't dab your eye, mine hair, or wonder why mine hair. I've always said that I... Was a rover. You mustn't knit your brow. You should have known by now. You've every cause to doubt me, my hair. And still continues to be box office gold today. Great and the Good would flock to work with her, and it was her collaboration with the Pet Shop Boys that saw her land another smash hit. An icon adored by generations of stars, she's still influencing today's most relevant artists. Liza! 
And with a life story that's had its fair shares of highs and lows, Liza with a Z still stands as one of show business's greatest performers. Ladies and gentlemen, Liza Minnelli! Thank God. you for agreeing to loosen up with us today. Oh, mercy. Can't believe Liza Bernays. I know, <laughs> you can touch her if you want, Denise. It's all amazing. amazing. What's it like when you sit there and watch a montage like that with your career flashing before your eyes? Unbelievable. I mean, you think, huh? I've done all that? Yeah. But I'm all, you know, I always think that I... If somebody once asked me what I want to do next, and I, th I thought, I want to do everything I did, but better. Yeah. <laughs> but better. Yeah, but wow. better, yeah. Couldn't do it much better. Oh, yeah, you could. <laughs> well, you're sure still going, though, aren't you? I'll say. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop you. You've got your new album out. Yes. Your work ethic is, uh, is, is quite incredible. Where does that come from? I was... Um, what I always wanted was to go on Broadway. That was my ambition. And that's where I started. I started by... Uh, learning how to build sets and making paper roses for the chocolate soldier and doing all of the things you have to do to learn everything about the theater. And that was fabulous for me. So that by the time I got a job, I'd already done summer stock and this, that, and the other, and off-Broadway. And when I landed Flora the Red Menace, I thought I was going to die. I mean... Broadway, oh, th that was when I, that was yeah. it for me. Probably quite different because, of course, in, in, in Hollywood and, and, and in L.A., so many people were the product of famous parents. Many of them just wanted to go down that route into film, so it was quite unique that you wanted to do it the hard way. I don't think that many, really. Uh, certainly some, yes. Uh, no, I, I, you know, when I lived in Hollywood, I wanted to be an ice skater. Did, Did you? you? Get right up Don't get us started oh. on that. <laughs> I'll give you a few tips, Liza, if you hang about after. I want to be an ice skater right up until the time I saw my first Broadway show. Then I thought, hmm, maybe I'd rather do that. How old Is, were you then when you saw um, that? I had 13. 13, when you realised mm -hmm. that's what you were going to do? Yes. And what did your parents say? Because didn't they um, kind of say, right, you're on your own because they wanted you to stick with your schooling and you quit school to, to head to Broadway, didn't you? Well, I went to 22 schools. What? So, what yeah. did you do? Why? Yeah, I know. Well, we changed zone and we travelled a lot. <laughs> a lot? Yeah. A lot. But, um, no, my parents knew what I wanted to do. They and, really and did. You were quite so when I, when I though, told them, I said, I'm, I want to go and study in New York for the summer. And they said, all right. And um, both of them said, and it's just for the summer now. I said, well, what if I get a job? And they laughed. I said, well, we'll see. So I got a job. And my dad said, well, you did it. I guess you're going to stay there. I said, yes, I am. You're still there and now. And I did, yeah. Six years on. Yeah. In fact, it was where your recent album was recorded, Confessions. But um, it wasn't recorded in a studio, uh, was it? You recorded it. In uh, bed. In bed. <laughs> I had to. Yes. I broke, you know, well, let's put it this way. I had to have my knee replaced. Ooh. So besides two hip the replacements, hips, yes. then the knee went. So I thought, well, I can't just lie here and do nothing. What will I do? So my friend Billy Stritch came over, and um, I said, well, let's put some stuff down in case we needed it, you know, sometime. So we did this. I was in bed. And we did it before the operation and then after the operation. And then, uh, you know, everybody liked it so much, they said, we want to put it out. I said, oh, OK, whatever makes you happy. You well, know? This is it. hard, singing lying down. I mean, sitting up lying down. No, you, know. you kind of... No, it's funny, you learn to sing anyway. <laughs> you know, standing on your head, you learn to sing on Broadway. Okay, so but, uh, yeah, it was fun to do. How did you get the... Do you have an orchestra or anything in the bedroom? No. <laughs> just Billy. Just, just <laughs> Billy. And the, 
you know, the guy who recorded it. And, um, and that was, that it. was it. Yeah. Is there a, is an element to the album that reflects that kind of mood and atmosphere? I think so. I think it's very intimate. And it's not a performance. Rock Brenner, my friend who's Yul Brenner's son, he put it so well. It's in there someplace. He said it's the difference between um, performing in a theater and standing at the piano with friends at home mm. and singing. You sing differently. Mm. Yes. You just do. You'll start what? a new fashion, like the unplugged thing where people did it, didn't yes. they? Live from I their beds. Yes. 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 <laughs> Let's find that rock. I'll find it. OK, yeah. Bedtime singing. You're here with us for the whole of the show today, so we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking more with Liza Minnelli. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome back to Loose Women this Tuesday afternoon. We're joining us as a loose lady today. It's Liza Minnelli! Hello. Yeah, still letting loose with us today. It's Liza! Woo! Now, when you sat down to put this, uh, and you literally did lie down to put this album together, um, how did you select the songs? Because there are songs on there that I know have a, a real kind of pertinence to you, uh, tracks like All The Way which really kind of go way back, don't they? Yes. Uh, well, because I didn't know it was going to be, be in a real album, I just recorded the songs that, about love that were all different points of view. And with my history, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you just, You've I earned can, your stripes, yeah. Uh, I've got, yeah, I've earned my stripes. <laughs> and it, some are very funny, and some are absolutely beautiful, like all the way I love. Yeah. Don't you? But there's some really good ones. There's a song from Lady and the Tramp that Peggy Lee wrote called He's a Tramp, oh, but I love, love him. Song. Breaks a new heart every day. You know, songs like that. So it's just fun, and you can't help but thinking about the different people you've known when you're singing them. <laughs> well, I mean, who was the tramp then? Oh, I'm not telling. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've never lost your sense of romance, um, despite being married four times. What, what do you think are the greatest lessons you've ever learnt in love? Um, and, and do you think the best lessons are the hardest to learn? I don't know. I heard you talking before about whether to be funny with a man or to not be funny. I think it depends on the man. I think you have to be sensitive enough to, to what they, understand what, uh, what he's like, you know. See, um, but would you adapt your personality to make a man happy? That was my problem. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what I've your friends did. did? I, you, know, like you, I, see. you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be there and I'd say, oh, isn't that cute? He left his socks in the middle of the room. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> which is fine. And then six months later, when you're more yourself, you say, pick up your damn socks. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, who are you? <laughs> so you're a bit of a people pleaser on that front. Yes. Oh, I'm the worst. And, and there's not so much anymore, though. Mostly. Yeah. I've gotten better. And, and is there a special someone in your life? Oh, there are all special people in my life. Um, you mean, am I dating someone? Yes. Oh, are you? Mm. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, no, I was sort of. But I have a dream. One wonderful dream. No, I have a dream. I'd like to have, in my life, a man with a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Who took me swell places. You know? Do you like the extravagance? Be, wait. He can be older. Right? Then I'd like to have a man about 45 or something who's absolutely passionate about anything. It can be about medicine, it can be about this, that, whatever he's doing is passionate. And then I'd like to have a 19-year-old who visits me twice a week whose name I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think, ladies? <laughs> See, now, Carol would understand all about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> He's not 19, he's 29, actually. Oh, honey, that's sensational. Yeah, he's <laughs> sensational, yes. I bet he is. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't want the old one, though. No? I don't want the old rich one. Mm. Are you into all that extravagance and wealth and...? Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I but it's were. nice to go to an expensive place once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to not always pick up the cheque, I guess. I guess it's nice to have a choice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And I think that's 
And the old ones are usually happy with very little, aren't they, so... Are you talking from experience? I'm the old one here. I'm the old one here. What are you talking Are you an extravagant person, Liza? No, I am. to spend a tight one. Really? I'm the worst. Really? You really watch your pennies? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm the worst. I'm always broke anyway. <laughs> you, know, so you haven't got a solid gold bath, then? A solid gold bath? Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them on oh, cribs. cribs. Please. Do you watch yeah. cribs? No, no, I don't. Not yet. No. Mind but you, listen, you don't need to. You I just pop around to see your mates. Yeah. I tell you like what. Cribs. I can, I've had two business managers, you know, who handle my money, who are in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I chose my business managers this, with the same luck I chose my husband. <laughs> oh, dear. It's true. That's got to hurt, but you always bounce back, don't you? Well, I always keep going. I mean, I'm, I'm so curious. I think if you're curious and you're... Literally, if you're curious and you're grateful, you can't be depressed. You don't have time. We're, um, we're totally fascinated by the sort of, uh, you know, amazing friends that you've had. And you called um, the late, great Liz Taylor one of, your, one of your closest friends. Was that a relationship that was for many, many, many years? Oh, yeah. I met her when I was really little. I mean, she was working with my dad, um, um, father of the bride. Great movie. Was. And uh, she was great. She was a really nice gal and fun funny and, and funny. Was she funny? Fun and funny and absolutely passionate about everything. Mm. She also was, wasn't she, which I think we miss now, a real film star. You know, yes. we, we it's like she a... was the last one. Yeah. Well, isn't it? It is. Mm. Do you think there's too much accessibility with all the, you know, with all the sort of social networking sites now? There's no, there's, there's, people can access people, you know what I mean? Whereas I loved it in, in, in the days that you grew up when movie stars were movie stars and, you know, you always saw them dressed and nobody was in their tracky bottoms and... Do you miss... Yeah, it? I, I missed... The real era of that, when it looked like, you know, the, they only put things in the papers or in columns. Mm. When the, the star was, you know, had three dogs and a yeah. this and that, or was all dressed up. And that's not true. It was a working town. You got up and you went to work at seven o'clock. You came home at six thirty. Because of the studio system, absolutely. That dictated it, didn't and it? all of the press like that was um, for the public. It was to impress the public. But that was not the reality. Mm. The reality was a bunch of people who worked hard. Mm. Like a coal mining town. Coal miners. A better dress. <laughs> well, it's about as hard. Just don't get quite as dirty. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take another break, but when we return, we're going to talk Oscars and sex in the city, amongst many, many other things. And we'll have an exclusive performance from Liza. We're back in a moment. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> with us and soon to perform once more. It's Liza Minnelli. Yay! Now, I hope you're feeling brave, Liza, because we've opened um, this interview out to our audience at home who've been flooding us with questions for you. Linda has been in touch. Yes, uh, I have... Um, no, not, not you. Oh, sorry. Linda oh. the viewer. <laughs> Bella's. Yes, the table. Um, this, is, uh, she said, this is from Linda at home, sorry. Uh, not her own fabulous Linda Bellingham. She says, I saw you at the Coliseum in London last time uh, you performed and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the Royal Albert Hall on Wednesday. But is there someone uh, that you would love to go and see? Who, which performer really excites you to this day? Oh, God. So many different kinds of people. I, Do you like I like Gaga? Michael Bublé. Oh, Michael yeah. Bublé. We and like I Michael. like Lady Gaga. And I like... Um, Pink. We saw you doing Beyonce oh. in Sex in the City too. Oh, I love Beyonce. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you did but that's that crazy well. music to dance to. Yeah. yeah. You know. Had you had your hips done then, Liza, when you did it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> well, amazing. Both, but not my just... knee. Yeah, we hadn't had your knee done no. because you you just danced like like a young and it was fantastic in that film. Thank felt. you. Brilliant. Can you still Thanks. shake them? Well, obviously you can still shake them. Oh, I can shake them. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a little more work. <laughs> How was that being on Sex in the City, though, in the in the film? Was that? Oh, it was fun. Was because it? Because I'm friends with all the girls, oh. you know, in, in real life, and um, I know the producer, director, and right. So when they called me and said, "Would you like to do it?" I thought, "What a hoot!" I said, "Sure." <laughs> what a hoot! Uh, <laughs> but I was lucky. I had Ron Lewis, the choreographer, 
do the choreography. And to re-choreograph, he did it brilliantly because he kept some steps in, but just changed the timing. But it was, he really did a beautiful job and it was so great fun to do. you still did the hand, didn't you? Yes, all that, but he would put it on a little bit of a different beat. At the end, you know, something like that would happen. <laughs> you're great, you're great. More viewer questions, ladies. Me? Yes, Bellas, yeah. let's go with yours. Okay, uh, who cut uh, your iconic cabaret hairstyle? I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did it? Yeah. Um, it, uh, you know, I'd already, I'd, I had already, you know, seen the eyelashes in California. I thought, oh, this would look good on her. Because my father said to me, women didn't all look like, you know, Dietrich. There were, and he showed me pictures of Theda Barra and all the dark-haired stars of the time. So I had all the makeup that I, that I designed. And then when we were, when I was getting my hair done, I thought, Maybe I should, so I cut it, and I got all the makeup on, and I went over and knocked on Fossey's door. I said, how do you like it? And he said, huh? He said, <laughs> it's great, but maybe you should have asked. <laughs> I said, oh, well, I thought you'd like it. Well, it's Manelli's like daughter. It's certainly I'm a Manelli. Time. Um, just going back to, because uh, when you were performing in Sex and the City, it was a yes. gay wedding, wasn't it? Yes. Now, Sam and his boyfriend are both huge fans, and they want to know how you feel about being such a massive gay icon. Well, I, I think it's wonderful. I think that I'm, I'm, I feel lucky that anybody is a fan. Oh. You know, I really do. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that it... Proves that gays have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> and Liza Claire has uh, has rung in to say, if you had the choice, who would you like to see to see play you in a story of your amazing life? Me. <laughs> Too bright. I can't even imagine. You know, I don't. Well, I'm not there yet. I'm not going to worry about that again. <laughs> did you get a chance to see um, the remake of Arthur? And, and what did you think of it second time around? Were you impressed? I didn't see it. No? No. And why? With Dudley Moore? You know, that's... Mm. Although we that's... know firsthand that yeah. Russell Brand is a very good drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but Dudley was special. Yeah. And Dudley did things like nobody else. Like, most people who play a drunk We'll go back. Yeah. You know, Dudley went right into the... <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> and he didn't drink at all. Did he not? No, not at all. Wow. Well, he's, he's very convincing. It's wonderful. The film... How do you, should, um, I was a great fan of Charlie Bubbles. Thank you. I just you. remember Thank so you. brilliant that film was with uh, Albert Finney. And that wonderful moment where you left your hair I know. on the pillow. It was, it was a piece, wasn't it? And yes. Those tiny touches. Do you... It's a very different uh, energy, isn't it? It's a very different discipline film, do you not find? Or, or is it you just apply the same premise? It's closer. So I think anything that you do on stage, you have to cover up, you know? And then cover that up, too. And then try not to do anything. Almost like if I was... Uh, like if somebody said to you, how are you? And you said, fine. What if you didn't like the person? You'd say, fine. Right? So you have to think of the under dialogue. Mm. And uh, on film, I don't really know. You just have to, you've got to, my dad said, you've got to hear something for the first time and say it for the first time. Mm. So, and would you like yeah. to do more movie work? Oh, sure. If it's the right thing, you know, I... I'm always grateful for whatever happens. <laughs> I really am. What the heck? You know, at this point, I'm longing to see all of you when I go on stage here. I'm, and where's that other place I'm playing? Kenwood? You've got Kenwood House. Kenwood House. Kenwood House. <laughs> You're yeah. sold out at the Royal yeah. Albert Hall and that's... Yeah, but come to Kenwood House. That's Kenwood where House. It's, it's, it's <laughs> outdoors. Where I live. I used to live near there. It's and where I live in Manchester. You're there on the 4th. And on the 6th, oh, you're around to things off in Glasgow at the concert hall. Fantastic. Liza, will you, will you sing us out today? Will you give us one more song? Sure, darling. Wonderful. Of course For now, I will. For now, ladies and gentlemen, Liza Minnelli. Yay! <laughs> Thank you.
Tom Chase's <laughs> earrings, OK. Lots of you have been in touch today uh, saying thank you so much. Uh, how lovely it is to see Liza. Tanya says, even after all these years, Liza and Dudley Moore and Arthur still make me laugh every time. Louise says it's her birthday and it's been made even more special with music from Liza. Well, what a treat, ladies, wasn't it? Yes. She's going to play us out now. And uh, introducing Liza's performance, we're going to use some words uh, from her friend Rock Brinner. He says, these are the songs uh, she returns to for her own pleasure, evoking the light touch of an era in jazz when the singer was a part of the music, not apart from it. So singing, you fascinate me. So it's the legendary Liza Minnelli, accompanied by her band. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Liza <laughs> Minnelli. <laughs> Oh! 